Dr. Carson, you wrote this great book, The Perilous Fight. Who are we fighting with? We're fighting on behalf of the family. Who, who is fighting against the family and why? Well, that's a very good question because the people who are fighting against our country are the people who are fighting against the family. The family being the mechanism whereby you can get in our country. Our country is very interesting in that from its very inception, there have been those who have not been in agreement with the concept of how we run our country. They want to fundamentally change our nation into something else. They said, you can't run a country on the basis of what the people want. You have to have a king. You have to have a monarch. You have to have a ruling body. So that started even before our Constitution was completed. And there have been subsequent groups, particularly communists, Marxists, who totally disagree with the way that we do things and feel that their way is the superior way and that it takes care of the people. It creates equality or equity, as they like to say, so that nobody ever has to worry about what's going to happen to them. The only problem is it's been tried in lots of different places and it's never worked. It's never worked anywhere. And, um, you know, one of the most familiar places that people are from, know about is Venezuela. Venezuela was a beautiful place. I've been there a number of times. Uh, had the number one economy in South America. Beautiful hotels and resorts and museums. The biggest thing that the people argued about was whether or not they were the most beautiful people in the world. That was their issue. We've got the most Miss Universe and all these kind of things. That's what you heard over there. And look what happened. Almost overnight, once the socialist Marxists took power, and uh, even now, they're fighting vigorously about who won the recent election. Uh, the socialist powers that be uh, look like they were very soundly defeated, but they control the media, and they have all the power, and they're trying to say that they won. And uh, this is not going to turn out well, obviously. But that's what those are the kinds of forces that we're fighting. They want to change this country in that way. And the principles and values that we espouse as a nation are absolutely antithetical to socialism and Marxism, where you give all power to the state. And the state promises to take care of you, but they have to rule your life from cradle to grave. And that is completely the opposite of what the United States of America is. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, very important concept, and justice, very important concept for everyone. That's right. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I know Hugo Chavez, who led the Marxist revolution in Venezuela before Maduro, he passed away. When he passed away, he left a multi-billion dollar personal fortune to his daughter. When he entered politics, he made, had no money whatsoever. And when he left politics, his daughter was one of the richest women in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, how, how does that work if you're not uh, literally stealing from the people? And it happens in, in all the socialist and communist countries. The people end up poor and the rulers have excessive wealth. Well, look at, the, look at Putin, uh, probably the richest person in the world uh, in Russia. But look at the general population and how they suffer. It's the same story time and time again. And at some point, you would expect people to, to understand that. But uh, the reason that you have at least half of Gen Z favoring socialism over capitalism is because they don't really know what it is. Uh, they haven't experienced it. They haven't read up on it. They haven't uh, studied the effect that it has on the population. And they've just listened to propaganda. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the socialists have really taken control of the news media in this country. And, of course, if you go back and you read that book, The Naked Communist, or you look at that, that January 10th, 1963 congressional record, 
uh, you'll see that one of the goals was to gain control of the media so that you could manipulate and control and indoctrinate the people. And that's been very important to them, not just uh, the news media, but Hollywood and uh, TikTok and all of these uh, mechanisms whereby you manipulate the opinions of people. And if you do that on a cons consistent basis, uh, almost by osmosis, people begin to change their minds about what's right and what's wrong. Uh, 